Hello, my name is Andy Gattenby. I'm a screen actor and a former unbeaten professional boxer. Come here today with chat with Brit Flix. Uh, my dad originally got me into boxing. He was a former sergeant major in the British Army, so he had that. Um, he boxed himself as well. He had over 20 fights. Got into it when I was about 14. Uh, and went all the way through till I was 28 years old. Um, boxed amateur, unlicensed, and uh, boxed as a professional as well. Uh, as a pro, I had six fights, won all of them, like back to back pretty quickly, and uh, had my next fight lined up for the English title. But um, I had a routine medical exam come up, like uh, just before the title fight, and uh, I was referred on an eye exam and had to retire from boxing. After I heard that, it was a complete 180 on my life. Obviously, I was. Um, I'd been boxing my whole life and uh, it just come like out of the blue overnight, you know, so I just sort of, I was fighting one minute and then the next sort of heard the news and had to stop straight away. So it was uh, like a, a complete 180, you know? Um, so yeah, I got quite down and sort of didn't know what to do after that. And then just sort of stopped, regrouped and then just sort of come up with a plan of action to move forward and sort of come up with something new so that I could cut that part of my light off, you know? Once I'd finished boxing, I, I knew that my mindset was so solid. I, I understood that with the right mindset, you can do anything. And I've done lots of um, uh, challenges and, and things with charity before. We've done we've done ten marathons in six days. I've done I'm scared of heights. I've done bungee jump, skydiving, swam from Portsmouth to the Isle of Wight. We trekked the Great Wall of China. So I'm a firm believer that if you set your mind on something, you can do it, no matter how big it is. You know, um, and that that sort of has a knock-on effect with the act the acting so when like you, you might say to someone oh, I'm going to do this and they might, they might be like oh you can't do that but as long as you can see it and you know where you're going it doesn't matter what they say that mindset that you have is, is so important to, that you just you, you fixate on where you want to go and no matter what anyone says you know you're going to get there so before I started acting me and my wife was at home one day and was watching a film on TV and uh, at the time I had a mindset that I'd come off the boxing, I'd finished Hell Week, I'd done really well in that as well. My mindset was that you could literally do anything in the world, you know, anything you want to do, you can do. And we was watching um, a film at the time and the acting was quite bad in it. And um, I said to her, I made a bet, I said, yeah, I bet I could do that. And she was like, no, you can't. I said, yeah, I can, I can definitely do it. And I can do it better than them as well. So we, I said to her, I bet you within one year I'll be in a film. So um, we shook hands and then, yeah, that was it. That's how the acting career got started. The next day I was up at the crack of dawn, how to be an actor. <laughs> and then, yeah, just started rolling from there. And I did get in the film within the first year as well. So, <laughs> come on. <laughs> I was sat at home one day and I just uh, I Googled be on TV and it come up Deal or No Deal or Special Forces Ultimate Hell Week. <laughs> and uh, I picked the Special Forces show and ended up um, being a contestant on the what ended up to be one of the toughest television programs ever recorded on British television. I got to the uh, the final of the series, and um, when that come on TV, it gave me a real buzz, you know, watching me week in, week out on BBC Two, getting all the friends around and that to see how you're done. So when that finished, I thought, you know what, let's give acting a try, see how we get on with that. When I applied for the Special Forces show, I, uh, I told a few little white lies. <laughs> I'm king of the blaggers, as everyone says, so I'll always find a way to get in somehow. Like, I'll never go the conventional route and just fill out the box or get in line. I'll always find the back door or a way around the side. So I told them that I was a former Olympian, Olympian uh, silver medalist, I think I told them. And uh, that sort of got me like a, a sh like a shortcut straight to the front of the queue for the auditions. And when I actually, um, I got to the auditions, I think there was in like Hertfordshire, I wasn't very fit at the time. And I remember just blowing, like really blowing, like, like struggling with it. But I, I told him I had a little injury. And, um, and then uh, that, like from the background, it sort of gave me that pass to get through to the, uh, onto the show, you know? So it was, uh, yeah, it was good. <laughs> On the Special Forces show, it was just relentless. Everything was hard. There was nothing easy on there. You know, we had every two days, it changed. So we had Special Forces from around the world just beasting us for two days. As soon as they'd left, the next two days, a different country would turn up and then they'd be the ones that were ragging you. So it really did. You tapped into your mental resilience, you know, sort of how tough you were. And um, it was just hell from start to finish, you know. So yeah, it was good. Good experience. The hardest one on there would be the Australian SAS. They're very similar to the British SAS. But we didn't have any food for like two days. We was out trekking. We'd done like probably a marathon, the equivalent of it, with no food, up and down the mountains, um, carrying logs, carrying boxes, just real donkey work, you know? So it was relentless and uh, yeah, hard work. I was broken, yeah, because I gave everything. I said on there before, like for me, that was a good opportunity to get closure on, on my boxing career. So I said, 
all, all the time I was on there, I'm just going to go until I die and hopefully I don't die. Or I'll go until I drown and then hopefully someone pulls me out of the water and I don't drown. And that um, it becomes sort of a running joke with the BBC because I was finishing last in quite a lot of the challenges where I was knackered. And then they'd come up and they'd be like, you're going to quit, you're going to quit. I was like, no, you've got to kill me. And then they sort of become a running joke for them. Can we kill Gatenby today, you know? So, yeah, I reached the final of the series. Um, I got sent home in the end because I made the SAS interrogator jump. It's uh, when he come in to interrogate me, I got a bit bored, give him a little like a uh, boo. And <laughs> he jumped back and uh, flinched. And after that, they said I would have uh, I would have got people killed. And uh, yeah, sent me home, sent me packing. <laughs> So after I finished that, I was a little bit lost again, but that, that was a really good um, part of my life, to be fair, because it gave me closure on my boxing career. When I was boxing, just literally overnight, I just got told I couldn't fight anymore. So I was, I was quite lost, you know, but when that special forces program come on, I, I suddenly got an opportunity to show the world how tough I was. So I grabbed it with both hands. I didn't give up, I stayed true to my word. And when that finished, I sort of had that put closure on everything that I'd done before that, you know? So it was sort of the end of that chapter and then the start of a new one. So I knew that I didn't want to be um, stuck in a rut, you know, I didn't want to be that guy that's like 40 or 50 in the pub telling people I could have been a boxer, I could have been a champion week in, week out. I needed to sort of ch channel that energy that I had before and transfer it to something new and act and become the, the perfect substitute for that. So when I first started acting, I literally watched every YouTube video, read every book, attended every workshop, like I uh, went to every, just literally done as much as I could. Uh, Google was on Google every day, how to be an actor, how to be better, how to do this, how to do that. Transferred them attributes from boxing to acting and was just working three, four, five hours a day, like nonstop and, and before it all started to roll and, and come good, you know? My first role was a TV series called World's Most Evil Killers. And that was on Sky TV, was doing the, um, all the reenactments for a serial killer called Carrie Stainer who's currently on death row in America. So it's quite a cool one to get into. First proper role in a feature film would be a gangster film I'd done called Card Dead, um, filmed down in Devon uh, with uh, director Tim Fawn. So it was, uh, it was a good film that um, should be released soon, actually. I'm hopefully it's gonna be released this year, but I had a really good cast on it. Um, some good characters and good breakdowns and that on it, you know, so yeah, it was a good experience. My biggest learning curve on, on that one and on all of them is just to, to sort of soak up your surroundings. So whenever I get the opportunity to be on a film set, I'm not just doing my own thing, I'm just watching and learning all the time. So I, for me, it's an experience to like, um, every day's a school day, you know? So as soon as I've finished my bit, I'm watching the next person to see what they're bringing to it, how they're developing their character, you know, soaking up information from every single person around me and just, yeah, picking up as much as I can really. Yeah, Renegade was really good. It's, um, it's an international action film from uh, Jonathan Sofcott and Shogun Films, directed by Daniel Zarelli. It was um, it was a good cast. It was a good step up for me too, being along uh, alongside the more prominent names, you know. So again, it was a really good learning experience for me. And um, having that opportunity to stand side by side with them, you, you sort of you, you can't beat that, you know, because no matter how many films they've done, or you know, you might have done ten films, they've done two hundred. But at that moment in time, you're, you're both as important as each other. So they can't do their job unless you smash yours. So you're sort of working together and you got that, and there's no hierarchy there. So when you come away from that, you're taking that experience on and sort of, it makes you better, you know? I've been on two films with Billy Murray now and he's, he's a gem to be around. It makes you feel calm and also like, you know, he's been around a long time. So what he doesn't know about screen acting is probably not worth knowing. So just being in his presence, it's just, it ignites a little fire in your belly, you know, and sort of, it's a good, it's a good feeling to be around him. And I say, there's not many people that have done what he's done. So what a person to be able to learn from, you know? I've got a, I've got a list as long as my arms on actors that I'd, I'd love to act alongside, but it'd have to be, Ray Winston would be, would be up there. Um, he's like, just from watching the films when I was younger, you know, to be acting side by side of him. And I'm so confident now in my ability, you could put me with any actor in the world and I would not stand out. Like any A-list actor in the world, if I was stood next to him and we had a scene, I'd smash it, I know I would. So it's, it's sort of like, closer becoming a reality that these actors that I think, oh, I'd love to act with them. I'm now in the position where I could easily do it and I would look good as well. So it's, uh, it's exciting. My dream role, I would love to, I'd love to be in a prison series. 
um, or play sort of like a really gritty crime role. Sort of, I want to come in, just just tear things up. I want to come in and like a, uh, like I said earlier, in a blaze of glory, and just have a really good gritty role that I can get my teeth stuck into. That you know, when you like you watch it, and then the next day you 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 can't stop thinking about it, or like two or three days later you watch it again, and every time you watch it, you see a different part or a different performance. They're the ones that are really like um, that's going to happen, and I'm sort of excited for you. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I'd I'd play a boxer, but the thing is, I sort of, even though I I, I can fight, I've got the attributes, I look look more like a fuck. (laughs) No, it's good. No, I I like any role, all all, all the roles like that, any action, anything to show my physique, because I can do it better than a lot of people. You can't teach boxing overnight. You can't, someone can't, they might be the best actor in the world, but they can't pretend how to fight. Some, you'll get found out if you know, if you know you're fighting, like when you watch films and this fight is on there, and as soon as they square up or stand there, you're like, he can't fight. That's the wrong role for him, you know? So you can't, that's either in you or it's not. So it's good that I've got that in my locker because it brings that um, authenticity to the role, you know? So any sort of action role, fighting role, boxing role, I'm, I'm made for it, you know? So I'm very lucky in respect that I've been around the good, the bad and the ugly throughout my life. I've boxed and I've been around people that are on the right side of the law and the wrong side of the law. I've been around crooks, I've been around nice people, I've been around everyone from every different walk of life. So when I get the character sent to me for a script, I normally just sort of like find someone that matches that, that I've sort of been around and I can sort of play it off that of from like personal experiences with them you know so I'm very l- lucky that I've been around such a broad range of people and I can sort of bring that to any character that I get given you know you know for me it's I just want to um it, it, like always reverts back to boxing you got to work harder yeah. when I was boxing I was up at four in the morning going on a four mile run coming back going to work coming back, going to the gym for two hours. Yeah. Now I'm at five in the morning, I might be doing like accent training, or I might be doing character yeah. research, or I might be doing something else. Then I go to work, come back, then I'm doing emails, I'm sending yeah. off. I'm, you gotta be on it all oh, the time. Yeah, and you gotta be smart of it as well. I think you have to be smart. Like, if you get like, I always say to actors, you gotta, you gotta work hard, but you gotta work smart. Like, if, you, if you're gonna break through a wall, yeah? Someone could get hammer and chisel, and just be banging away for like four days trying to get through that wall. Someone else could just go rent a drill and just drill through it in half hour. They're both working hard, but one's working a lot smarter. So you got to like adapt your brain and just find a way to do it. Have that like championship mentality where no matter how you do it, you just find a way and then you're there, aren't you? I'd give sort of anyone who wants to get into acting, just, you know, don't give up. Just keep doing what you're doing. Um, keep pushing forward and, and try and find a group of people that are sort of doing it as well, you know, because so the easiest way to kill a dream is to say it to a small-minded person. So if you can find a group of people that are on a similar journey or have got the same vision, then it makes things run a lot smoother for you, you know? Like, hand on my heart, I'm going to be a household name in British acting. I've said it to everyone and I've sung it to the stars every day. I will be a household name in British acting. I want to be in big films, big television series. I want to come in, tear the script up, wreck the place out, and then come out in a blaze of glory. So that's where I'm going. With the law of attraction, I find, yeah, people have a goal and they think, I'm going to do this, but they don't tell anyone. And if you don't tell anyone, you're restricting where you're going to go. Because if you're not projecting it to the world, how's it going to come to you? So I tell everyone, I'm going to Hollywood, going to be in mainstream television series and Hollywood films. I no doubt about it. So yeah, as soon as you project that, then that's, you, that's going to come to you. Because as soon as you tell people, then people, at first they doubt you, and then they get behind you, then they believe you, then they, then they actually want you to do it. So yeah. it's a really powerful thing, because if you're at the stage where you say something and people are doubting you, it becomes hard to sort of push through that. But as soon as you break through that barrier, they say they go from doubting you to believing in you, to pushing you, to actually wanting you to do it. And that's a really powerful thing, you know? So I'm represented by uh, Paul Byram Associates. Uh, they're based in London, and my agent is uh, Matt Butcher. So they're, they're really good. And uh, since I've been with them, they've, I've completely leveled up. The opportunities that I'm getting from them now uh, are just fantastic. You know, week in, week out, like really, really good auditions. So I find that like being an actor is one side and the agency is the other. And if you're not working together, you're only going to get so far. So if I'm doing everything I can and they're doing everything that they can, like together, we're, we're going to go to the top. It's inevitable that we will because, you know, with, with the two forces running together, we've got all the luck in the world on our side, you know. So it's uh, very grateful for them. <laughs> Come on. <laughs>
Coming up, we've got, a, we've got a few things. I've got an action film uh, down the line later this year, but that's currently under an NDA. And um, just working on our own thing as well. Me and a couple of friends is just um, in the process of starting up a production company. And then we've got like a script together and that. So we're going to be pushing that this year and sort of like making our own luck while the rest of it sort of comes in, you know? Yeah, so it's going to be a crime genre. It's based around like a, a pub. And there's uh, this sort of like different ongoings that sort of around, around the pub, sort of like dodgy dealings, dodgy characters, sort of ducking and diving and that. So yeah, it'd be good when we get it together. I've got a couple of friends, uh, Chris Evangelou and Steve Sipple, and we're sort of uh, creating the production company at the minute, and we're coming up with like the storyline and the logline for a, for a film. Um, we're still in the process at the minute; if it's going to be a film or a TV series, but we've got like quite a solid story that we're going by. So we just we're just finalising the script at the minute, and then we're going to be sort of pushing forward to roll that in production over the next 12 months. You know, so as we're working on like our own production as well at the minute, we sort of we're having like a hands-on role with that as well. So we'll be developing the story and everything too sort of um and and everything that comes around with that you know so it's um i think you need to you need to make your own luck until the luck comes to you so if you can sort of um do both then you you're winning you know thank you for listening for my interview and uh, you will see me in hollywood soon <laughs>